In the first part of real vector spaces, we looked at defining what a vector space is, what it looks like, and we looked at one example of a vector space. So we're carrying on with that using our same definition for a vector space. So just to remind you, a real vector space is a set of objects together with vector addition and scalar multiplication defined. So let's look at this one. This one looks a little bit different compared to the previous one we had. In the first video, we looked at R3 with standard addition and multiplication. So now let's look at something that's not standard because that gets a bit more interesting. So if I've got a set V here of all ordered pairs where my entries are only positive. So I only have positive entries in my ordered pairs. So if you want to visualize it, these are only things in the first quadrant, not on the axes, on the Cartesian plane, and nothing negative. And vector addition is defined as follows. Now, take a look at this. You might notice there's a little circle around the plus. We just sometimes do that if the addition looks a little bit different than what you're used to addition looking. Because standard addition of ordered pairs just says u1 plus v1, u2 plus v2. But this is not a standard definition. I'm making a new definition. And I can define it as I choose. So here's my vector addition. u plus v means, how do I add two vectors in the using this kind of addition that I'm talking about? I multiply the first components and I multiply the second component. So this is what my vector addition looks like. Make peace with that. Now my scalar multiplication, if I take a scalar and I multiply it with u, I actually raise the components to the power of that scalar. So this is what my set looks like. Now I'm going to tell you up front, this set is a vector space. It meets all 10 requirements. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to just go to look at some of the requirements just to see if, you, if you're happy and if I can convince you. But if you want to, you can write all 10 out and see that they work. All right, the first thing is if we look at closedness, if I add two vectors in the set, do I again get into the set? All right, we're not going to look at that formally necessarily. Let's just look at it informally. Let's just take two elements of that set. 5, 2 will be in there. Let's say we want to add that to 3, 10. Remember, all the entries have to be positive. That means I'm multiplying 5 and 2, so I get 15, and I'm multiplying 2 and 10, and I get 20. So this is what's happening. This is how addition is defined. So if I look at the first vector addition axiom, which says u1, u2 plus v1, v2, must again be inside my set. What we're saying is, am I always going to get, firstly, you're always going to get an ordered pair. That makes sense. The way addition is defined, I get an ordered pair out. But is the ordered pair going to be in this set? What's special about the set? Both entries are positive. So if I've got two positive numbers and I multiply them, I'm going to get a positive number. I get two positive numbers, I multiply them, I'm going to get a positive number. So this is again going to be in my set V. All right, why is that? Well, U1 is positive and V1 is positive. Therefore, if I multiply them, my answer is going to be positive. Same with U2, it's positive, and V2 is positive. Therefore, if I multiply them, I get something positive. So the addition is definitely closed. It will be distributive, you can check that. We'll talk about the zero shortly. Let's just look if scalar multiplication is closed. What does scalar multiplication mean? If I take, for example, 4 times 2, 1, that scalar multiple, this definition tells me what I do is I say 2 to the power of 4, 1 to the power of 4. That's what scalar multiplication is in this set. Now, please take note. Every set, we have to have, see how it is defined. This doesn't mean if I'm working with the same set, this is always how addition and scalar multiplication is defined. It's for this example. So let's take a look. That's just 16 and 1. Now, will I always get positive? I'm always going to get an ordered pair, but will those things always be positive? It works well if that scalar is positive. What if that scalar is 0? What is 0 times 2, 1? Well, it's 2 to the power 0, 1 to the power 0. Well, that's just 1 and 1. So I still have an ordered pair, both entries positive. What about a negative number? Minus 4, 2, 1. Well, that's 2 to the power minus 4, 1 to the power minus 4. 
which is just 1 over 2 to the power of 4, 1 over 1 to the power of 4. So again, positive. Any real number, even if it's a decimal or an irrational number, I'll always get an ordered pair that's positive. So my scalar multiple is going to work. C times U is definitely going to be an element of V again. I'm not formally writing it out. We're just investigating here. This can all be done formally, but we're just playing now and investigating and looking at this example. So let's look at our zero. So our third vector addition axiom is about a zero. So I need to define a zero that's in the set. So it definitely can't be zero, zero, because zero, zero is not in the set. I need something in that set. So that if I add it to my vector u, I get the vector u back. Now, how does adding work? Well, adding says multiply the first component. So what do I have to multiply with for it to stay the same? I want to multiply u1 with something so I can still get u1 out. Well, I multiply it with 1. So it's 1 times u1, 1 times u2. So my 0 is 1 and 1. So this is what my 0 vector looked like. So stop thinking that a 0 vector necessarily has zeros in. This is what it looks like. And that is in my set V. So it's a, it's a legal 0 vector. And it works. It satisfies the conditions of a 0 vector. And our other vector addition axiom about commutativity, that will work. The negative, what will the negative be? Well, if u is equal to u1, u2, I must find minus u. What must y and minus u look like? Well, if I, multi if I add u to minus u, I must get my zero vector out, which means I must get 1, 1 out. Well, what do we do? Well, what must I multiply with u1 to get 1? 1 over u1. 1 over u2. Are both of these positive? Yes, it's an ordered pair. Both of them are positive because u1 and u2 are positive. So that's also in V and it will meet the requirements. You can fill in the dots. So that's our negative. So this set... And I said I'm not going to write it out, so I'm stopping there with this set. But you can go through all the axioms and you will see, as it is defined, vector addition and scalar multiplication for this set is a vector space. So this is a vector space with those definitions. All right, let's move on. Matrices, a set of two by two matrices. Now you must be comfortable with working with matrices and have knowledge on matrices before you look at this. But let's say you have. If I look at a set of all 2x2 two two matrices, and these are standard definitions for matrix addition, add the corresponding components, and for scalar multiplication, multiply each component. This set will also be a vector space with addition and multiplication defined as such. The zero vector will just be the matrix 0, 0, 0, 0, because if you add it to any matrix, 2x2 two two matrix, it'll stay the same. And the negative will just be minus u11, minus u12, and so on. So this is definitely also going to be a vector space. Now, yet again, you need to go through all the axioms to check and to confirm, but you can do that in your own time. The 2 by 2 matrices with addition and scalar multiplication defined as it is here is definitely a vector space. And it'll meet all those requirements. All right, now, let V consist of a single object. I've got a set with only one thing in, a zero vector. I don't have to say what it looks like. I'm just saying it's a zero vector. This is the zero vector space. And it is going to be a vector space. If I define addition as follows, if I add zero to zero, I get zero. If I multiply any scalar with zero, I get zero. This Set V with the operations defined as it is, is also an example of a vector space. It's a bit of a boring vector space because it's a zero vector, but it is also a vector space. In the next video, we're going to be looking at some more examples of vector spaces and some properties of vector spaces.